Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today let's talk about this limit. This is the floor function of 6x minus x squared and we want to see what happens to this function when x is approaching 3. Okay, so um, this one is the problem that is really easy to get it wrong and in fact, I'm going to just show you at the beginning how to do this problem wrong. So this is the wrong way to do it. So the wrong way to do it is that we simply just plug in, just do a direct substitution uh, into the function and then we are going to get the wrong answer. So let me just show that. So if we plug in the 3 directly into the x right here, then do you see what's going on here? What happens? Uh, it's that we are going to get the floor function of 6 times 3 minus uh, 3 squared. And then we are going to get what? We are going to get the floor function of 18 minus 9. And then we are going to get a whole number right here, which is the uh, the greatest integer uh, when we plug in the 9, which is what? what? What is that? Just 9, right? But that is the wrong answer here. So that is that is bad. Okay, so we don't want this answer here. The reason for why it's bad is that you can actually try to graph this function on decimals and then you will see that the answer is actually not 9. But then now, how do we do this problem? Well, one way to try it is that we can, maybe we can try to factor this function here, the 6x minus x squared, and see what happens. Uh, in fact, that also would be approach that doesn't really work. Now, I'm just going to show that quickly why that doesn't work. So let's say we factor this xx minus x squared right here and see what happens is that we factor out the x and we are going to get 6 minus x. And so if x is approaching 3, then we can see that this is also approaching 3 and this is approaching 3. And so this expression right here would also be approaching 9. And so you may say, should we be considering the one side that limits and see what's going on? Well, we can try that. Let's say if x is approaching 3 from the left side, then do you see what's going on here? Well, this x is approaching 3 from the left side. So it looks like what? It looks like 2.9. 2.99 and then 2.995 and then 2.999 and so on, right? And what about the other one? This one, when x is approaching 3 from the left side, then also looks like this, right? But when we take the 6 minus all that, then what happens is that this, this 6 minus x would be approaching 3 from the right side. And so it really looks like 3.01, 3.001, and then 3.0005 maybe, and then 3.00001, and so on. And you can see that because when we are doing the multiplication with the x and then also this x minus x, we're actually taking a number that is really close to 3 on the left side, and then we have a number that is close to 3 on the right side. And we actually don't know whether that's going to give us uh, something that's less than 9 or something that is greater than 9. And both can be possible. So that will not really tell us whether this is actually approaching um, 9 on the left side or 9 on the right side. So that is not going to help. And then you may say, how do we do it then? Now, one way to do it, okay, is that we can actually complete the square on this function right here. Then you may say, how do we complete the square? Well, let's take a look. We can first let f of x be 6x minus x squared. And then we're writing this function, then we are going to get uh, factoring out the um, the negative one from the x squared. We are going to just get positive x squared inside the parentheses. And then because we factor out the negative one, so we are going to change the sign for the 6. So we get negative 6x. Now, we want to complete the square on this expression inside the parentheses. So we are going to get negative and then x squared minus xx. And then now, to complete the square, we need to add the square of half of this. And so what happens is that we are going to divide this by 2, negative 6 divided by 2. We are going to get negative 3 squared. We get 9. So we are going to add 9 here. Now, after adding 9, we cannot, we are changing the problem. So we cannot change the problem. So we need to do something to negate this effect. So we are actually subtracting 9 because even though we're adding 9 here, but because there is a negative sign here, we are subtracting 9. So we actually need to do what we actually need to add the 9 back. And so that is the original expression. 
in this when we complete the square we are going to get negative and then we get x minus 3 square plus 9. So rewriting this expression we can simply just write it as 9 minus x minus 3 square. Okay so this 6x minus x square is turned into 9 minus x minus 3 and then quantity square. Okay now let's take a look at what happens when x is approaching 3. So when x is approaching 3, okay, what happens? Then we can consider this x minus 3. We know that x minus 3 is approaching 0, either on the left side or the, on the right side, but because there is a square here, so we know that x minus 3 is approaching 0 on the right side, because even if there is a negative number here, but when we square it, what happens? We are going to still get a positive number, and this number is approaching zero. So we get um, x minus three quantity square approaching zero on the right side. Okay, now, and what happens is that we need to consider the whole function f right here. It's actually nine minus x minus three quantity square. So because x minus three quantity square is approaching zero on the right, then we can say nine minus x minus three square, it's approaching nine also, but it will be approaching nine on the left side. And then think about why this is true, because this is a positive number, even though it's really close to zero, but it's still a positive number. When we take nine, subtracting a positive number, we are going to get an uh, answer that is like eight point something. Okay, so this expression as x minus 3 quantity square is approaching 0 from, from the right side. This whole expression right here, this function f, will be approaching 9 on the from the left side. So it will be like 8.99, 8.999, 8.995, and so on. Okay, so what happens is that because this function is approaching 9 on the left side. So now if we consider the limit as x approaching 3 of 6x minus x squared, okay, and then we can see that that can actually be this function right here inside the floor function it can be replaced by the expression 9 minus x minus 3 quantity square. And as you can see, this is approaching 9 on the left side. And so what is the answer? Well, let's just recall something here. Let's just quickly recall that if we have things like 8.9, what happens? Because this is the greatest integer function, so we, we will get the answer. That is the integer, that is the largest integer that is less than or equal to this number. And so because this is not integer here, so we are going to get 8 as the answer. And even if we are getting 8.99999, right, and then we are still going to get 8. So because this is approaching 9 on the left side, this is the, in the same situation as those two examples right here. So what is the final answer? The answer will just be 8. Okay, so that is the final answer for this limit problem here. Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like this video, please subscribe and share. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.